Cool. I'll let you start this one. <gasps> Welcome back to Done Playing, but no. Okay, ready. <clears throat> Hey guys, hey ladies, hey friends, hey foes. We just wanted to take a second to remind you that while we're okay swearing when little ears are listening, you might not be, and that's okay. So here's your chance to pause us and wait for nap time, or pop in your earbuds. We hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome back to Dumb Playing by the Rules. My name's Janelle. And I'm Jenna. We were just catching up on our um, current favorite obsessions of what we're listening to murder podcast wise and what true crimes are happening in the media and everything before we started. And so I got excited at our intro. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It was it's it's a, a fun hobby of ours that we like to keep up with true crime, I guess. A sick hobby obsession? is the word. Yeah. Uh, it's true it, crime. Okay, are you are people in your family into it too? I'm just wondering because my grandma is very into it. And so anytime she comes, we talk murder and watch oh, Dateline and all I that stuff. That. And I'm like, I wonder if that's kind of where we get it. And my son really is into it. And at first I was like, this is really weird. He's seven. He shouldn't be. And then I was like, well, that's the age I started getting into it. I remember, mm -hmm. I think I was, I was elementary school age when Amber Haggerty and Opal Jennings disappeared. Mm -hmm. And it was near where I was living. And then I started becoming obsessed. But I remember my parents tried to like hide it from me. But you know, back then you couldn't record the news. And so it was like, we have to watch the news. Kids go in the other room. And I'm like, ear against the wall, listening. And so I was probably close to his age. So I'm like, I guess it is within the realm of I think, Normal. yeah. Well, we all, we grew up with these, like uh, my big ones were Jacob Wetterling was one that happened in Minnesota. And then John Benet Ramsey was it mm. for me. Like once John Benet Ramsey happened, I've never stopped just desperately consuming crime. And I know that there is a high correlation between people that have anxiety and liking true crime. Really? There's something? Yeah, there's a super high correlation. And that's why you may or may not notice that a lot of them have like, commercials for um like therapy like the therapy ads on them because all of us listening a lot of us have anxiety and there's something there's some correlation between true crime and like if you can process a crime from a safe distance it makes you feel safer like within your own realm somehow and so it's okay. like scratching an itch for us anxious people but like I can't stop consuming true crime. I'm like books and media and more and like every time somebody posts the gif of like what's the first thing you ask when you get to heaven and it mm -hmm. is who killed John Bonet cuz mm -hmm. I need to know. Burp. I was trying to <laughs> I know. Oh so she was the same um corrections already. Uh it was not Amber Haggerty, it was Amber Haggerman. And okay. her and John Bonet were in 96. So I was like 8 or 9. So, so that makes sense. Going down. Yeah, my son is 7. So if I was yeah. like 8, 9. Yeah. I remember really seeing the I remember hearing people talk about Amber and Opal. And for Opal I was a little older, maybe like 11ish, I would think. And I remember like people, moms, people talking about it. Like, see, I don't even know Amber and Opal. Give me your two. But they were synopsis on them because I've never even. Is this a Texas one? Mm-hmm. Because like so my, I want to say mine was a Minnesota one. It's where you grew like the big one that happened where you grew up that like imploded your '90s like safety bubble. And I could be completely wrong because my memory is awful. I'm pretty sure Amber Hagerman is who the Amber Alert is named after. Oh, you might be right. And it was in Arlington. Arlington was like this. So I grew up in Duncanville and then Arlington was like one city over. And that's like where we went to our movie theaters, a lot of our restaurants. So it was really close to us. I'm pretty sure she was with her brother and got abducted on her bicycle. That's the same and then as they Jacob found Wetterling. Her. They never yeah. found Jacob. Uh, they might have found him like last year. Something big happened last year, but I don't think they found him. But I think the guy like admitted maybe that he did it or was finally charged mm. that he did it. That was similar to, so Opal, I was a little older. That was 99. And she was in Saginaw, which was a little further. That's actually where like Brandon and I were living. And they never found her. But not that long ago, they found, they're pretty sure, or they might have proven it by now, her skeletal remains. We're going to have to um, deep dive to find out the finality. And I of think all that this. she was like 
front yard playing. Both of these, I think that's why these were like really big deals because it's like one was like by her grandparents' house or something. Like they were all relatively close to home, like where you would think it's safe. So, and 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 if I'm wrong on those, I'm really sorry if I completely butchered those. Like you did. It was. That's what my years ago at this point, but I was thinking remembers. about that this morning. I was like, it's so nice that my kids can play out in the front yard now. And I don't really have to watch like yesterday. I was like, can I go take a shower while my kids are playing in the front yard? And I was like too much, but like everyone has a ring cam now. So like, is mm-hmm. someone going to abduct a kid from a front yard? Yeah. Probably well, and my always like-, like thought is if it's something that close to home and Brandon and I have talked a lot about this because we do let our kids play like mm-hmm. – outside by themselves is usually that's a very intentional abduction. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm driving down the street. Oh, there's a kid. I think I'm going to take them. It's usually planned, plotted, and then executed. It's not just like a whim. Maybe. I mean, it's granted, like if they're out, you know, in the world and they come across somebody who is everywhere and there's like, it's fine. Yeah. You have to, to get out of our neighborhood. You, there's only like, you know, pretty much one way. And yeah, everybody and everyone is so nosy. The, everybody's so nosy, like even in our neighborhood, because there's only 40 houses in here. People mm-hmm. are like, I saw a weird van. Even our FedEx or, like, guy will tell out. us yeah. like, hey, I saw a yeah, car Jenna's drive by FedEx three times. guy like, was yeah. giving her a He's alert so the sweet. Other day. Because he knows our kids are outside and he's like, just an FYI, I saw this black car. They might just be looking for homes, but I saw him drive around three times and they made me uncomfortable. And I'm like, thanks. Had your babies. So that was a random spiel, but totally Can we just cool. do a true crime episode and talk about all of our favorite true crimes? Hey, guys, do you want us to do a true crime episode? Because we'll totally do it for you. I mean, we could definitely do it. I have – and how it impacted us and all of that. Yeah. Ooh. Where'd you go? I'm like, where'd I you went, go? I went, to, I went space. to the space where like before Jacob Wetterling and we'd go to the bus stop by ourselves to after Jacob Wetterling when my mom would sit at the bus stop with us. And it was mm-hmm. just like such a like, now we lock our doors. And like, I know that's so cliche, like now we lock our doors at night, but mm-hmm. it was just like such a different. And I mean, he got kidnapped a hundred miles from us, but like it was the end hey let's just of, do it let's just do true crime you want to this whole episode hell yeah, yeah. jenna and i had an idea okay so now, now i need to know like how old were you when this happened how close to home was it okay now i need to look up when jacob wetterling happened oh my was god there was there like degrees of separation or was it just like well yeah sort of yeah so my all of my cousins went to school in went to college in the town that jacob wetterling was abducted from he was abducted um, at the age of 11, uh, October 22nd, 1989. So I was, what, five? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No one ever found anything. I think they finally figured out who did it within the last two years. He was riding up to speed. He called, his parents were at a Halloween party, which like, tell me this doesn't just like hit so close to home with all, all parents. He is, he called his parents at the party they were at on a landline to landline and said, I think he was having a sleepover with his brother and one other boy. They were like, we really want to ride up to Speedy Video, which I don't know if y'all had Speedy Videos Mm-mm. or what, I, but it's Blockbuster. We okay. really want to ride up to Speedy Video and rent a movie. Is that okay? And the mom was like, one of the parents said, no, it's not safe. And the other parent, the fun parent got on the phone and was like, I think you guys can do it. And they did it. And a guy pulled up with a gun. And with a gun. Made them all like, with a gun and made them all lay down and told the two to run away and took Jacob. And so the brother and the I think a friend took off running and the guy took Jacob and then that was it. So Patty Wetterling was his mom and basically became like everyone in Minnesota's mom because we were all she was on the news. She was heartbroken. And, and so that was like my first I mean, I was five and 89 oh yeah but parents have at what is it five o'clock news it you turn it on because you can't record it so it's it's that kind of stuff is on in your house it was like 60 or 100 not even it's i think it was more like 60 miles from our house it ended up being where all of my cousins went to college in saint joseph minnesota and then they like finally found the guy i think like last year so i mean think of all the like patty how'd they find him do you know uh, the guy, oh, it's going to make me crazy, but the guy, they, he'd always been a suspect. Dale 
Heinrich, a longtime person of interest, in the abduction of another boy in a nearby town. He confessed to the kidnapping and murdering of Wetterling, as well as abducting and sexually assaulting another. So the guy finally confessed in, like, it looks like 16 or 2016 or 2018. And then they, like, went to his house and found, like, evidence to support his confession, if I remember correctly. But But why? Like, why would you confess after all that time? Because they just always knew it was him and they just never – I think I, – I do also want to say like he was maybe dying and there was like mm. some sort of like – Confessional deathbed thing. But there was also some sort of like promise that he could maybe get out in five years and I think he had like six years to live or something. There was some weird like shroud around it. But then jo- Jean Benet was like – it mm. for me like I couldn't get enough once Jean Benet happened and I know every theory of Jean Benet and like everything about her I think my mom was like religiously watching it with oh Z- really like how like how I put my noise canceling headphones on and listen to stuff my mom didn't have noise you didn't have headphones. those no and so she was just like sorry kids like I need to watch this which I get like Jenna and I both started cold this week and I was talking to another one of our mutual girlfriends and she was like yeah I fully ignored my family for the duration <laughs> of cold because it's so good i was just like bye-bye on a but road trip warning janelle was like it's so good warning it is also like disgustingly good it's so crazy. it's not just like like and i only got a few minutes into it and i was like oh my like think about the creepiest most disgusting man you can imagine and that's kind of what it's so far well not about. to mention a lot of the best part which um the person that recommended it to me didn't reveal to me is that there's actual audio do you remember where, like people were doing voice record mm-hmm. voice memos for diaries for a while and they also this couple like scanned all of their diary entries into stuff and so they have like all these diary entries all these actual voice recordings and one of the voice recordings the guy is so creepy and he's eating which is like I was literally like trying not to dry heave because I hate the sound of people eating. Me too. And his his voice is like this. And it's just mm. so creepy. And he is so emotionally abusive. Well, no, psychologically abusive. But like all the abusives, maybe. There's a couple times of like people hitting each other. Okay, so true crime. What are your favorite? Jenna's hooked me on a couple. And I've had a few people actually reach out to me and say, what are your top like four or five true crime podcasts? I do like Morbid a lot. Yeah, you got me super hooked on Morbid. Morbid for and it's a, a synopsis. Big, it's like a big – it's popular, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's not like an underground one. But I hadn't um, heard of it. You hadn't? Not till you told me about it. The other one, and one of my friends told me about it, is The Orange Tree. But it gets confusing because oh, episode it. one is called The Orange Door. And if you're from Texas, this is really good. Um, the students at UT, University of Texas – put it on. And it's about, I don't want to give too much away, something that happened near UT. And it's, of course, murder. And it's good. (laughs) Spoiler alert, there's a murder. (laughs) And if you, and I remember hearing about the murder. I didn't go to UT. I went to TCU, but still it's all relatively close. And I had friends that went there and it was kind of like, what? So that's one of my favorites. I'm trying to think of what other murder ones. I, I like anything murder. A lot of times they'll be limited series type ones. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they don't yeah. put on ongoing ones. I do Crime Junkie. I know not everyone is a fan. It took I've me a little bit to get into it. I've Crime Junkie. I couldn't get into it. I've listened to like two. And my, I think my sister or my sister, my sister and my sister-in-law are all very – We're okay, so let's say that this all stems from my favorite murder – my mm-hmm. favorite murder was the OG. This was. was literally the first pod. I mean, I was packing up my house in Minnesota and I binged my favorite murder from episode one, which I do believe one of their very favorite murders is Jean Benet. So I was like, well, I'm in. Mm. And then they cover Amber Hagerman. I do know that. Yes. We'll have to look I've it up. Because I've listened to that one. Well, then mm-hmm. I need that one so that I can know that story. Yeah. yeah. But my favorite murder is kind of like tinkered off a little bit into just like replaying live stuff and like I get it there they've launched a whole podcast network whatever but go back to like the OG also mm-hmm. Jenna listen to my favorite episode of my favorite I was gonna murder say which one day. was it the one I was cracking up at typhoid Mary Mothman. that's not the one I listened to Mothman was the one I listened to the other day but they're in the typhoid same Mary. episode I think are they I could be wrong because I was packing up another – I was packing up my house in Richmond while I listened to that episode. Typhoid and Mary typhoid is my Mary. favorite. 
epic. Epic, Mm -hmm. epic, epic. And my dad used to call us all Typhoid Mary when one of us would get sick and get the rest of the family sick. He'd be like, oh, here comes Typhoid Mary. She's looking like she's feeling better. (laughs) I'm so gross that if you don't know what this is, you have to listen to it. Um, Brandon is the cook in our family. (laughs) And if he goes in and I see like hasn't washed his hands, I'm like, get your poop sticks or get your poop fingers out of our food. You're gonna give us all. Okay, so we're gonna have to link. We're gonna have to link my favorite murder episode of Typhoid Mary because we have promised in this podcast 55 times that we would tell you what other podcasts to listen Mm -hmm. to. Small Town Murder is one of my top five. See, I couldn't get into that one. I think it's the voices. It's a masculine energy, and if Mm -hmm. you're not like I love masculine energy, like Bad Friends is my favorite comedy podcast, and it is. Sometimes I have to fast forward to it because it is so dirty. Crime and sports is another one. I don't listen to sports, but like when they did OJ Simpson, it was really great. Um, Their voices are very soothing to me. I like fall asleep within three minutes of turning it on every night. Well, that's my thing is I was falling asleep. Oh, you have to set your sleep timer so you don't get murdered Mm -hmm. all night. I slept my sleep timer for 15 minutes and I'm never awake past it because but see like, I want then I get mad if I fall asleep because I want to actually hear them and then I'm like but then you just rewind okay here's the secret trick you set it for 15 minutes then you fall asleep instantly and then you just wake up in the morning and rewind 15 minutes because <laughs> <laughs> I never make it okay so small town murder is amazing and they are also do crime and sports which if you're a sports person or your husband's a sports person it's just it's not usually murdery it's usually like holy shit, Oscar De La Renta is a dick or Mm -hmm. holy shit, this person has so much money and they used it to like beat up women. And like, Mm. it wasn't confronting OJ one. Oh, I listened to that. I think I listened uh, to that. Yep. I think I might've said that one because I was listening to that. I know where I am during all my favorite episodes. Um, That was the OJ one I listened to of crime and sports. I know when I was at the hospital with my dad when he was sick, Mm. because I was like, fuck yeah. Okay. Here's something to blow your mind. And again, (laughs) My memory is awful. This podcast is just for fun. This is not a memory. So you test cannot <laughs> sue me. So growing up, my brother played hockey and he played hockey with this guy, and I'll leave names out, who went to a different school. So he didn't go to school with us. His parents were divorced and his dad like wasn't remarried or anything. And his dad was so kind and friendly. We would always talk to him at hockey games. And so my parents got to know him really well. My brother was probably like 15 and he was over playing at this kid's house. It's like one of those personalities, like you talk to him and every time you talk to him, you're like, oh my gosh, like mind blown. He has something crazy to tell you. And he had built the house that he had. And he was like, would you like a tour? And it was like one of those really unique houses. And we're like, sure. And so we're, and he was an author also. He was an author, a lawyer, an investigator. I think a private investigator like he had all these jobs at different times throughout his life is he still alive can he come on our podcast because he sounds really interesting unless he, he ends is up being, still alive unless he ends up being the murderer <laughs> that's true so then we're in the garage and he's like oh and those are all my evidence boxes for the oj case and i'm like pause what and so if my come brother's through. 15 i'm like what 13 and i'm just like hold on what <laughs> Can I be your best friend? And he actually has a book that he wrote about his theory on the case. (gasps) The book is OJ is Innocent and I Can Prove It by William C. (gasps) Deer, D-E-A-R. I'm so excited because I am okay if people want to say he's innocent, even though like, come on. Oh, it's like, that's what's interesting to me is to hear both sides. I don't- Of course, I can't. It was the OJ podcast that I was listening to, and it was like I was dead convinced he had done it. And then when you hear some of the stuff on the other side, it's like I don't even think I've heard this one. Now I have to listen to the OJ podcast. I'm pretty sure it's called Confronting OJ. Okay, so what's happening in the news right now, just so everyone knows why we're like this, is we're praying, praying, praying for the family of Gabby Petito. We do not know what's happening. We don't know where she is, but it's sucked Jenna and I in, and there's a lot of weird theories around it. Hopefully, she's fine and just in the woods and maybe like a little bit cold, but things aren't looking great. So we are praying for her and we are praying for her family. However, that's where this, we we came on with another planned topic and then just decided to say, fuck that. Let's talk about our favorite thing because we're deep diving into I mean, Danielle Petito. Gabby Petito. I'm sorry, Danielle Petito. I can't find what the OJ Simpson one was, but I'm pretty sure it was from Confronting, which now they also have Confronting Columbine. 
trigger warning if <sighs> if any of that is hard it was hard for me to listen to yeah, um it's, it's hard, really hard so. but it was very interesting to me that was really interesting to me the whole columbine thing i would watch we that were in yeah, because high school weren't we uh, middle school or high middle school. school yeah I was so it's probably like, in my master's program and you're probably in elementary school because you're yeah. so much younger than me. But <laughs> but that's also for me personally in school and being a teacher when so much changed. I went to a school where eventually – and I went to a school where there was a lot of crime, but it was like metal detectors – and all these things put into place, um, you know, like what you do if someone comes in. And none of that, like when we were younger, that wasn't even thought about. Mm-mm. School No, even and- when we went, when we were in Minnesota still and we were touring preschools for Zach, um, Josh came with me to one and only because he was never allowed to come again because he – grilled the preschool instructors so harshly mm-hmm. on what their plan was for an active shooter and I, how they we would protect asked the every kids. school yep every and school. they had nothing and I was like oh gee. you know what was really cool about the private school that we both toured was that they have a plan and they have a plan in place that people know about and that they share and it's limited knowledge and they also have a plan that's in depth and no one knows about it except police and administration because they don't that. want it to ever get out. And I was like, because it's an open campus. And I yeah. was like, that's really cool. So we're currently listening to Cold. Also, if you like a limited series, I really, if you go to the Dateline podcast, I really liked mm. Mommy Doomsday. But Which it, is again, now a show, right? Is it going to be? It, I thought yes. it was. What were our limited, uh, Dr. Dirty John is a show mm-hmm. and the show was as good as the podcast because I listened to, I did both. And there's another one coming out that is Dr. Death just came out. And if you haven't heard Dr. Yes. Death, fabulous. There's one episode that's pretty cringy regarding surgical procedures. I want to say it's like episode four. So when they start describing like his actual surgical technique, if you're like queasy a little bit, I would lay off that one. Or if you're flying on a plane like me and pregnant when I listen to it, get your bag out because you're going to need it. Like get your bar Seriously? bag out. I threw up on the plane because I was listening to that episode and I was pregnant. And no Josh way. was like, yeah, Josh was like, it's not even turbulent. And I was like, this guy's talking about fishing around in someone's spine. I'm, I oh. can't. And I was just like, Whoa. you're Josh my worst like, cool. nightmare on a plane. Cool. I know. And we always sit like in nice seats and I'm always just like sweating and barfing. Like, oh, OK. So I should have to sit in the back. I should have just sit in the I'll back. fly in the back. You can sit in the front. And I can never get out of my seat fast enough when it happens either. And I started bringing like my own barf bags because theirs weren't like durable enough. And then you have to like <gasps> walk of shame it back or wait. Call why the is it what you're listening to or is it just flying? Well, it was. I'm like a nervous, anxious, vomity flyer, anyways. But mm-hmm. listening to that, and then you know, like how your blood sugar does that weird thing when you're pregnant. So I hadn't eaten enough. I was, I had one kid and then one in my stomach. I was over hot (laughs) and then it was a little bit bumpy. They started talking about his surgical Mm. procedure performances and I was like, that's it. I'm done. And Josh was like, oh my God, you're white as a ghost. And he ended (laughs) up even big and that was it. And then you have to like call the flight attendant and hand it to her. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And she's like, it happens all the time. And I'm like, well, that's weird because I fly all the time and I've never seen anyone barf but me. Repeatedly. That's actually really funny. I mean, not if I was in that situation. No, but so don't worry but... about it, Jenna, because it never happens because I've never seen it happen to anyone else but me pregnant. I threw up every time I flew pregnant, I'm pretty sure. A few more I wanted to add. Mm-hmm. Down the Hill. Have you listened to that? Mm-mm. No? The Delphi mm-hmm. Murders. I think it's like a limited one as well. I don't know where they would go unless there's an update. That was one that also I want to know what happened. I got Brandon hooked on that one. Does that um, one involve... Uh, let's do a pre-warning dead kids or no dead kids in that one dead dead kids, kids. yeah right, i think yeah and i think the one that cold season one i think has dead kids uh mommy doomsday we have dead kids so sorry but yep. unfortunately yep. those end up being really good sometimes someone knows something is good it's i want to say a lot, yeah, a lot Six of seasons yeah a lot of seasons I I okay, it. if you don't write, look at yours, and then if you don't want so um, like actual murders and actual kid bad things happening to kids, S Town was one of my original favorite, and that's just like creepy stuff that I happened. Feel like in different most t- people have listened to that one. I at hope this point. so. Well, I thought everybody apparently everybody had listened to Cold Season One, but me mm. and I didn't know about it. So S Town's what's have- got me into podcasts. Mm, S- 
S Town is was amazing, and I'm trying mm-hmm. to think of there was like three that I listened to while I was packing, and S Town was so well done. My very first podcast was the one with um, is it Anne? What was his name? Aid Syed, I want to mm-hmm. say that was my yep. very first podcast. I was pregnant with Zach, and I listened to it at the gym, and that one is on NPR. Mm-hmm. That one's from NPR. Is it? Yeah, we listened to that one when we were in Canada. And we would like drive around and then we'd sit in the car because it's like, we want to finish the episode. I want to know what's happening. Um, This one might make me a little on the weird side. Brandon thinks it does. Park Predators, I really enjoy. Jenna loves about- Park Predators <laughs> while she's RVing. Yes. So it does make while you on the weird side. Yep. It's like a very like sensory experience because you're RVing, yes. listening to murders happening in RVs. So there's also a running group and it's <laughs> they talk about people who – like to listen to true crime while they run and the stories the are hilarious ever can we be friends with them yeah because there's one i want to say it's morbid that has a lot of background sound or no maybe it's park predators it's park predators and it's not like background sound like interference it's like um so and so was hiking through the woods and then they'll have like the sound of like crunching <gasps> leaves. Creepy. I'm, I'm 90% sure it's part of so You're critters. like looking behind you like who's yes. behind me? Oh my god. I'll Jenna, hear it. So sick. Yeah, I'll hear something and then I'll jump or I'll like, you know, I'll hear something and rustling in the grass and so I'll jump more towards the road and it's like, oh that's <laughs> in my headphones. So you're and there's so many like of going us through haunted houses <laughs> while going on walks. Yep. And there's so many of us and it's Everyone's always just joking, like, today I made a fool of myself by... Oh my god, Park Predators just came up on my phone when I was scrolling to see what other ones I've listened to. I think there's two seasons. And then if you're not into murder, but like creepy, there is Let's Not Meet, which I think (gasps) I got you into that You got me into Let's Not Meet and it is so relaxing, but don't listen to it while you're driving because it always makes me extra sleepy because he's got one of those like ASMR voices where you're like, please just read to me all day, every day. Mm -hmm. I listen to that one while I mow a lot and it's nice because it's a lot of short stories. The only caveat I'll say, he'll have guest people read, um, but he reads the majority of them. And so in my head, a lot of times I'll picture a male and then you get to the end and it's like, oh, that was all about a female. And it kind of just like changes how you oh, viewed so the that, story. That doesn't, that doesn't phase me. Well, and I'm like, oh, so was this their lover, you know, or something like thinking. Yeah. And so then I, I don't know, it just kind of changes. And now I've noticed a lot of them will start like, let me preface this. I am a 33 year old male. Da, 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 da. There, and Jed is like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for answering so I can visualize this. Correctly. I just like to visualize it in a lot of times. Or I'll think it's about an adult and it turns out like, and this happened when I was 12. And I'm like, that's a whole different ball game. 12 yeah, versus you're like 32. a kid. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you listen to anything besides true crime? Oh, yeah. I listen to what a else? gardening podcast. I, of course, listen to Glennon Doyle's podcast. Oh, uh, I haven't been, I've been behind on that one. I just, I want to call it Abby Wambach's podcast. Oh, because I like Abby's voice. <laughs> fuck, I love Abby. Abby yeah. is just where it's at. And Sister on the podcast is also mm-hmm. where it's at. Like, she is so relatable and she has kids our kids' ages. And so she's just like in the throes of teaching them the parts of their bodies and the Mm -hmm. awkward things that happen when they're like ah my penis got stuck in the door and like (laughs) she's so relatable yeah we but don't you think they sound alike i like no that's why i like when uh glennon's like sister please answer Mm -hmm. i'm like yes i need you to always announce it like she needs to get like a beep beep when it's her turn because we can tell the difference or just like a voice transformer so she's like and then i went but don't (laughs) Don't you think that Abby is kind of like the female version, or the spouse version of Brandon and Josh? Oh, like she's yeah. so goddamn supportive, but also like calls you on your shit. And I'm like, mm-hmm. goddamn right. Like, and we very all need invested this. in the kids. And yes, yeah, we both are fans of Bethany Garcia on Instagram. I haven't listened to the podcast. Though, I was going to ask I if you lo- listened to uh, it. Of, I love, yeah. love, 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 love. And it's on my list of to do's because she is, I don't like to use the word vulgar. She's um, very real sex. She's yeah. very real. She's very like, this sucks. This doesn't suck. Like, fuck this guy. My kids mm-hmm. do what I want. Like, I do what I want. I don't care what you say about me. Like, 
I really, really, and so interesting, which I didn't even notice. She started off on Super Nanny, right? Her family That's kind of what got them big. I watched Super it. Nanny. Did you? Was it good? It was really good. I bet it yeah. was super good. And so it's a really good. So watch that and then listen to her podcast about it. That's what, what is I her did podcast in- usually? Like, I know they do. It's her and her husband. Or do they have like a set yeah. topic every week or do they just like kind of talk? So first of all, it's called the Garcia Diaries. I don't think we said that. Their last name is Garcia. And they always do some confessions. And so she'll read them because she gets confessions. She does yes. Confession Tuesdays. She's like one of the people that started that on her Instagram. Sorry, there was a weird noise. On her Instagram. And then she will read a few of those and get her husband's reaction and they'll talk about it. And then it's always a random topic. They talked about they let their son pierce his ears and she got some feedback on that, as you can imagine. Don't we Um, all just love some good parenting feedback? And so, and like, they'll talk about everything from like waxing to trips to parenting decisions to trolls to like internet trolls to her kids being in school and embarrassing things that happened. And they just talk about everything. It's just, I like their banter back and forth. Yeah. And they call each other out like nobody's business. I love just that. I'm so excited yeah. to listen to it. And it's like super on my to-do list of uh, listening. I also, uh, Nikki Glazer has a podcast that I'm really into right now. And it's a daily podcast Monday through Thursday. And there's like no set topic. She just rambles for like the first 20 minutes, then has her roommate platonic male co-host come in and talk for a while and then they do like some like uh news events that they like talk about and oh, cool. a lot of her opening dialogue is mental health related she's just blatantly honest you know she's had eating disorders she's had like self-harm she's contemplated suicide and she's found medications to help her every time and she's just like very open and it's very like she wanted it to be like a daily talk show without commercials. So like how mm. shows used to be in the 90s yeah. where you would drive to work and listen to it. But it comes out like late afternoon, Monday through Thursday because they do it the same oh. day. Oh, wow. And it is. It's very fun and easy if you're just like bopping around cleaning yeah. and not in the mood to like accidentally hear about a dead kid. Right. <laughs> I know the name, but who exactly is she? She's a pretty famous fe- female comedian. She's blonde and okay. skinny. And she, w- she was on Last Comic Standing a couple of times and she's had Netflix specials so she's like legit okay, that's and why she's I know the name. right now yeah she's rad cool another good one if you ever want information especially because we talk about um health is wellness mama I will admit I don't listen to all of them I've listened to wellness mama for has it been around for seven years because I feel like I was Ezra was a newborn when I started listening to it so if it's been around for I've listened to it for a long time. I feel like a lot of the topics I've heard at this point, or I know that's not exactly the route we're on. So I'll pick and choose, but it's really, really good, in my opinion, to scroll through like, oh, I want to learn more about like clean living or herbs or just anything. And she has a lot of guests on there. She does a lot of gut healing, hormone health, stress, childhood illness, challenging doctors, which that was a topic a long time ago that I really liked. Like if you know us, we don't medicate our children unless it's absolutely necessary. Like for instance, we don't medicate for fevers. The only time we medicate is if they're in pain. So if my kid is in pain because he has a fever, like really achy, he'll get medicine. And she talked a lot about that. And she was really helpful during like my pregnancies and raising kids. Also with that, there's natural MD radio. And I think I sent you a few about Hashimoto's. Yes. It's Aviva Ram and she is a health guru. She is amazing. Her voice is really soothing. She talks a lot about women's health. So like PCOS, periods in general, like healthcare. She talks about COVID. She talks about, I would say a lot of like women's health. I listened to it when I was having like heavy periods to try and like pinpoint what might be going on. Yeah. So that's kind of like a different route. (laughs) No, but I mean, if you're interested Um, in learning more about like holistic health and hippie ass shit, like Wellness Mama and Natural MD are good resources. Yes. And I have to give a shout out to Big Girl Pants Podcast. Oh, I've never heard that one. She is a friend from high school. So fellow Duncan Villian, if that's the term you want to use. And she is the one that I was telling you about, Janelle, that lost her dad not that long ago. Yes. 
And she said something about me on one of the episodes. And so I listened to it and then I cried through the whole thing. And then I've gotten into quite a few of those. They have a really good one right now about like birth control and the risks of birth control. Uh huh. And she recently got engaged and she has another girl, Kimberly, who I don't know. And they've been around for a bit and they interview a lot of like really cool people. So give that one a listen too. And sometimes I like that when it's not just like one topic. It's like, you never know what next week is going to be. I do like that too. Maybe that's what we should start doing, Jenna. All right. Where, here's my next question for you. Now I'm interviewing you. Where, what were your first true crime TV shows you fell in love with? They can be fiction or real life. SVU was always on, like Law and Order SVU, SVU stuff. Law and Order, yes. I think that was a big part of it because that's what our parents always played. But we, when I was in college, I got addicted to City Confidential, which was on A&E. And then that was like, they'd go to a city and talk about a murder that happened in the city. But t- I love the cityscape mm-hmm. being really detailed in the backdrop. And that's what mm-hmm. I really like about Small Town Murder is they like talk to you about like what housing prices are and mm-hmm. what the makeup of religions are and what the makeup makeup of married to single is and I love just like a very detailed cityscape so city confidential would take you through like the whole city for the first segment and then you'd hear about like the people in the like so city confidential was my number one and then that definitely morphed into first 48 I was gonna say first 48 yep fucking first 48 I think I've seen every episode god that was good tv and there was a lot of those that took place like near where we lived. And so it was always like cool. Cause I'm like, I know where that is. (laughs) I've been there. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, I want to be in the background on one of these. And then Cops was um, oh, regularly Cops. scheduled TV. And then Rescue 911 was regularly scheduled TV mm-hmm. that we all watched as a family growing up. Um, yep. So let's blame our parents for letting us yeah. watch Rescue 911. And oh my God, can you imagine letting your kids watch Rescue 911 no. and Cops? Like, no. cool guys. And Cops, like, it was so trashy that people and some of the stuff said and done. I remember we would be in like little local restaurants and it would be playing on the TV in the corner and we'd be like sitting there at the restaurant eating and watching cops. Do you remember like that the best episode of cops ever was the one where the guy was on PCP and he was huge and he was like doing something to his genitals. And so Mm. they had that blurred out, but his whole body was covered in blood and he kept like running at the officers. And I think they finally had to like, quadruple tase him because pcp makes you have like superhuman strength oh, yeah. and he just like ran through a f- f- like full strength <laughs> fence like the hulk it was but and i was like oh we would just sit around the table watching this as a family like yep. and i remember good. i always used to say to my mom like why did they let themselves be on tv i would be like i feel like they yes. have to have permission i would be like no thanks i think, I think they do have to have permission out. and these people did have to sign off i because i watched a documentary because that's how much i like cops i watched a documentary on like the behind the scenes of cops and i'm pretty sure they all had to sign off on it even if their face was blurred because remember there would be some where their face the was blurred, blurred faces i don't think signed off on it mm, okay blurred, blurred faces you're free but like i feel like everyone would know from your tattoo that's like yosemite yeah. sam tattoo on your arm <laughs> <laughs> or this, your voice even. like. Yeah. Oh my God, Cops is the greatest. I like how we're just like jumping over from like true crime. Here's podcast. Back to true crime. I like it. This is a true, well, because this, this is, is a our true brain. crime fan aficionado. Okay. I and will then, say yes. for the murder that happened in your hometown, you said it kind of changed how you guys were. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it, like your parents were less secure about you guys going outside or being outside? Oh, yeah. Like, my parents – I mean, we lived – we always lived on, like, big pieces of property. So, at the time when Jacob Wetterling happened, we lived in – on five acres, and it was, like, really close to a train track. And my mom would say stuff Mm -hmm. like, I don't want somebody to get off the train and get you. And I was like, who gets off a train and just gets a kid? And then – all the parents, we used to just go to the, like, all the parents started waiting in their cars at the bus stop, which was never, ever, ever a thing before Jacob Wetterling happened. Then we had, like, a family safety plan mm-hmm. of, like, you and I think I've talked about this before, where we have, like, a secret code word where, if so, I forget what ours was, where the person picking you up had to say the secret code word or they couldn't pick you up, even if it was your aunt. Like, mm-hmm. they were like, don't even get in the car with your aunt. 
unless she knows the secret code word because that means we called her from wherever we are. Right. And she is authorized. It was just, it was, it was, a whole, it shifted everything. Do you feel like it lasted or was it like, oh, it's hot news, safe, safe, safe. No, Okay, we Patty, feel a little more secure. Patty Wetterling never, the mom of Jacob, never was not on TV. And okay. Then there was America's Most Wanted, and you know that America's Most Wanted stemmed out of um, John Walsh's son Adam being ki- abducted and killed. Oh, really? And so, yeah, and his was like I want to say his son was like, let's not get graphic, but yeah, re- read the Adam Walsh story if you'd like. Um, and that's what America's Most Wanted spiraled out of was his son's abduction and murder, and so it felt like. I think because of the media sensations around these, it felt like it was happening all the time. And mm-hmm. so it never, it never went away. And Patty Wetterling was always on the news and she was with her and John Walsh would like go to speaking things together. And so it was just kind of like, it never went away again. See, I feel like ours, my parents got really paranoid and then kind of tapered off and then really paranoid again when the other one happened, because I had a best friend who lived on the street behind me and We could connect to our neighborhoods through like a back way, but it was not easy. So a lot of times we would go out our street and then it was a main road, but there wasn't a ton of traffic and it would just walk down to the next street, but it wasn't just like how normal neighborhoods are. Like it was a good 20 minute walk, even though it was one street over and I would be able to walk that. And then there was, my parents were like, no, not anymore. We're going to drive you or you need to go the back way. And no one liked going the back way because you had to climb this huge hill like on your hands and knees. <laughs> and no one likes to do that. And then I remember things kind of eased down and they let me do it again. And so I was, I remember I was walking with like my Walkman and I was listening to the radio on it. And they were like, something, something looking for, a, this must have been after Amber's. So this must have been after that one. And I guess they were now broadcasting abductions on radios. And so they were like, we're looking for a black sedan. Da, da, da. And I remember I was walking and then my heart was just like racing and every black car I saw. And I was like paranoid. Yeah. And then I just remember, and I guess I was walking home because then I just remember running home. The full sprint to yes. the front door. And I was like, I'll be fine. like <laughs> my walk man's like hanging <laughs> off, you know, it still had like the string, but it's like behind my back. And I was so paranoid. <laughs> and then we used to, there was like this camp that was close to our house. And so my friend that lived on the other street, he was a boy and he would, we would meet at the end of my street and we wanted to ride our bikes to the camp because our whole school was meeting there for the day. It was a field trip. And our school was generally pretty far away. We were so excited. We had like talked about like what we were going to wear because it was like a free dress day and we were going to ride our bikes and we were going to be the coolest kids because everyone else had their mommy take them and we were riding our bikes independently. And our parents were like, not anymore because one of these happened and we were just like devastated and we had told everyone that we were doing this and we were like so like hyped up and then we're so badass then we're like I know here with our parents just like you (laughs) and it was honestly like it wasn't far from our house but it was up this huge hill I'm like probably couldn't have even made it we would have had to walk and been like 20 minutes (laughs) late don't you love like the innocent child oh my gosh that they have yes yes we had Mm -hmm. and I remember also as a kid at one point we listened to the radio all the time in our house growing Mm up and we even had it on like the big speakers in the ceiling so it would be throughout our house and I remember they were saying it was late one night And they were saying that there was somebody who escaped from prison and they were describing them. And we had a lot of windows in our house and my dad was out of town and I was sleeping in my mom's room. And I just remember like, keep thinking I saw like shadows walk by and I was so scared. And I was like, oh my gosh. Isn't it weird how our parents, like my kids have only seen the news like during the election. Yeah. And even that, I was like, I feel like you guys learned like a lot of hate in that like five day span. But, like, isn't it weird how our parents never, ever, ever sheltered us from the news? Yeah, but then they wouldn't. They didn't want me watching The Simpsons, but then watching, like, abductions. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So it was, I don't know. And, and, you know, it's funny. And, like, my little mind, all this stuff felt so close. And it's, like, chances. And we lived, like, kind of, like, in a tucked back neighborhood. So chances of any of this really happening where I was, Mm -hmm. like, probably not. It was. Did you watch um, The X-Files? Yes. And there was a, um, I feel like there was like a kid version also. <laughs> and I used to watch that too. Kid version of the X-Files. I need to know what it was. Was it I on like Nickelodeon? It 
It was after, it was on like one of the, it was either like MTV or Nickelodeon, like after dark ones. I can't remember. I feel it like wasn't, it wasn't. Are you wasn't. afraid of the dark? Was it? No, but I loved that. Except that this one alien so one good. scared me so bad. We had the a damn picture. alien ones. I'd always, my mom would be like, all right, X-Files is on. Everybody come up that wants to watch it. I'd be like, is it an alien one? And she'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, I'm not coming. Because I was always so scared of aliens. I was way more scared of aliens than being abducted. I'm still scared of aliens if we're being honest. Like sometimes when are I go to bed really? and Josh is at home, so I'm like, will an alien come in tonight and get me? Like, I'm more afraid of aliens than, like, ghosts or murderers at this point. Okay, maybe there wasn't a kid one. Maybe Jenna's just just pretending that the X-Files was for kids. There's X-Files for kids books, but I don't think it was a book. So who knows what I watched? I was the younger kid, so... Well, maybe somebody will hear this and be like, oh my god, I totally watched that. Yeah, That's true. Blah, 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 blah. And so it was always, like, my brother picked it, and he has always loved, like, creepy dark things too and I was probably just a little too young to be watching them but we did my dad let me watch it at probably too young of an age but he knew what I could handle <laughs> he knew you he were let ready. me watch all of those yeah the birds like the birds was meant scary, for this but, oh I yeah. like that one I did too and I just remember watching those with my dad and so we've actually been watching them all again oh so, memories. did you know they're Right. Did you know they're coming out with um, a I Know What You Did Last Summer like series in October? No. Yeah. So we've been oh, rewatching them. timing. I know. October, I think, 15th. Get on it. Get I'm ready. <laughs> so now we've talked about murder. We've talked about lighthearted. We've circled back to murder. So favorite sleep podcast. Mm, okay. My kids are obsessed with sleep tight stories. So if you need one for your kids, it is, I honestly, when they are like, can we listen to sleep tight stories? I'm like, yes, we can. Because it's an old, like, lovely sounding granny that reads you sweet little stories about like Pumpkin the squirrel and her friends that day. So that's our favorite for kids. I also really like Sleep With Me. His voice, Scooter, oh, voice is heaven. And I'm trying to think there was one more that I've been listening to. Oh, I've actually just been listening to Nikki Glaser a little bit because I'm (laughs) trying... I'm trying to move away from – normally, I always listen to Small Town Murder, but sometimes it makes my dreams a little bit wonky mm-hmm. if it gets too far into the murder. Like, the first half hour of Small Town Murder is always, like, backstory of the town, and I honestly would subscribe to just a podcast about backstories about towns. Oh, me too. Um, but if it starts to get too far into, like – some of them are very brutal, like – Mm. I can't and they get into my sleep so I've been doing I do sleep with me I am sleep tight stories for the kids and Nikki Glaser podcast for humor and small town murder for every other night when I just want to be scared (laughs) I like that I like nothing much happens and they read it I believe twice I've never Mm. made it through the whole thing and the first time they read it they read it normal and then the second Mm -hmm. time they read it even slower it's seriously like it reminds me of like how my brain works it's like a story that's not really about anything like if they were like sum the story up in one line it's like I really can't because it's all over the place I Um, like that that sounds really fun and I was gonna end lighthearted, but I do want to throw one more out my favorite one to listen to this time of year if you're already ready for Halloween or next month when you're really ready for Halloween is lore l-o-r-e it has been around for quite a while I've listened to it for quite a few years and it talks about like just all kinds of mysteries throughout history so it's not just like right now some of them are really really weird and I it's really hard to explain what it is give Um, us one example of one episode I can't remember what they're called but basically it's like your child gets switched with this evil little thing (laughs) I don't know it's (laughs) I wish I could remember changelings. Is that what it's called? So it's not real. It's fake. It's all based on like lore. So like. Oh, so like folktale type shit. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I like that. Or your infant was like deformed. Like if you're, if something's wrong with your child, they think it's a changeling and not just like your child had a deformity. It's so delicious and spooky. How to even like describe it. I'm really, I'm butchering it. And his voice is so soothing. You will fall asleep to it, but then you would have. Jenna and I are big voice people. 
probably really, really weird dreams. Well, so. no, I just won't listen to it while I'm driving because, like, I was starting to have issues with listening to Josh. I told mm. him the other day, I was like, I think I might have fallen asleep for a second while I was driving by myself. <laughs> yes, I've and done he was that. Like, oh, he, okay, good. I don't feel so bad then. Mm-mm. And he was like, that's because you listen to podcasts where they're like, and then gently she mm-hmm. su- suffocated in a pillow. And the, 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 and he's like, I'd fall asleep too if I listened to somebody with a boring-ass voice telling a long-ass story. Like, <laughs> you need to listen yeah. to some rock. Exactly. Or it's like you're finally not having to talk every two seconds because Ugh. of kids. And your body so. just goes like, shut down mode. Yep. I can't even remember my favorite ones of Lourdes. I don't know why the changeling one is the one that sticks in my head, probably because it was so weird. But there's well, everything from like ghosts, them. like, <gasps> yes, from ghosts to, I mean, there better not be any it. aliens or I'm out. It goes back to 2015. Oh, nice. So there's a there's lot. Plenty of content for yeah. us. Yeah. And like Brandon even likes that one. And some of and them Brandon are really interesting. Brandon has a very refined palate. So if Brandon likes yeah. it, we all he like it. to like healthy living podcast. That's about all he listens to. So, but yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. Um, oh, and my so- final is if you want to get like a little taste of the news, but not be fully immersed in the news, I really like hmm. the daily uh, it's like a 30 minute podcast on like something happening that day or something happening recently that's popular and the guy's voice on there is really rad and like someday one day it'll be about cryptocurrency and another day it'll like break down like the conflict in Afghanistan into like really simple terms so that you feel like you understand what's going on in the world. Oh, that's cool. I could keep I going like on and daily. on about podcasts, but I'll stop. You sent or me the daily stuff. one time, it a specific story one. and it was good. About- Probably about COVID or cryptocurrency. I think it was, Those are my I think two it was biggest COVID. things at the time. Yeah, because it was a while ago. I think it was when the vaccines were about to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When they were like originally like, hey, vaccines are suddenly going to be here. And we were like, mm-hmm. uh, wow, this happened fast. And it was just yep. basically like, why it's okay. It was pretty cool. Well, very cool. Well, we hope you liked this random impromptu, random impromptu <laughs> murder slash podcast. People ask podcast. me a lot for podcast recommendations. Same. So like here, we checked it off the list and we'll do one every year if you need new content because we just gave you enough content for the entire year. So we'll mm-hmm. check back in in the middle of next September when your kids go back to school and we can set you up with a whole new genre of podcast. Yes. And if there's a genre you like that we didn't cover reach out because we've probably listened to something. My podcast list is ridiculously long. Mine too. And I can honestly say I've been a listener for quite a while. So I've heard a good variety. Yeah. And my husband listens to other weird ones that would probably pique some people's interest. But so with that, call your therapist and take your meds. Two, three, four.